Open and obvious. What is open and obvious? Well, that takes us to this week's case. It involves a case in Nevada, and there, there was a person who was shopping at a Costco store. And as they were doing their shopping, bang, a pallet tripped them, caused them to fall, and they suffered some bad injuries. They, in turn, brought suit against Costco, saying, hey, guys, you're at fault here, you're at fault here, that pallet shouldn't have been in the floor, and that's what caused me to fall. Well, Costco responded by saying, no, you're at fault because it was open and obvious. It could have been seen by anybody. It was a big pallet, and there it was sitting. The guy on the other side said, no, 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 it wasn't because it was only about four inches high, and I was looking at the shelves and the various things that you guys are trying to sell in the store. Well, it went to the trial court, and there the trial court invoked a doctrine that had been used in Nevada for years called the open and obvious hazard. And basically what it says is if something is open and obvious, it cannot be said that it caused a fall because it is open and obvious. You should watch where you're going. I mean, examples being a simple wall, open and obvious, you can walk into a wall. Another example being uh, low-lying planters, uh, such as frequently exist in buffet areas and other areas in casinos. Um, if it's there, it's permanently there, courts have consistently held in Nevada that that's an open and obvious danger. So the trial court looked at the case and said, wait a second, you know, this is pretty simple, big pallet, it's pretty big, it's open and obvious, therefore you are out of here, and dismissed the case. Well, it was appealed, appealed up to the Nevada Supreme Court, there the Nevada Supreme Court looked at it and said, you know what, the law is evolving, the law is changing. We know a little bit more about the way in which people interact in the world, we know a little bit more about the physiology of how people see. Long story short, we're not so sure a pallet that's only four inches high sitting on the floor in a commercial area is open and obvious because shoppers aren't going to be looking necessarily at the floor every single minute. They're going to be looking around at the various displays. Therefore, we think that this has to be reconsidered in the context of this case. And even though we've got a doctrine that says if it's open and obvious, you don't get to recover, we think in this case we need to have somebody take a hard look at that and determine whether, in fact, that was an open and obvious danger, and therefore they sent it back down to the trial court to be considered again. And that's where it is right now. Well, what do we learn from this case? What do we learn from this case? We learn a very important thing, and that is the law is constantly evolving. The law is constantly changing. We may have doctrines which exist. They may be modified by later cases. They may be changed. They may be completely abandoned by later cases. Cases are highly fact-dependent. It depends on what the facts are. And those facts will determine whether or not a long-standing doctrine is going to be modified, abandoned, or upheld. The law is always fluid and in its state of flux because the world in which we live changes. We're being impacted by technology today that didn't even exist as recently as 20 years ago. And in order for us to be able to govern ourselves and be governed by law, we need to have a law that will accommodate these changes. Accommodate these changes and allow us to continue to progress using technology and various other things that we want to use and doing so while still being governed by law. Okay. Hey, brought you this case this week as we're bringing cases every week so you understand how the law works. I'm David Allen.